Hi everybody, it's Elaine Cooper, your Better Living Coach, and I'm back here in my kitchen for the fourth part of my series, Cooking Amidst Chaos. Now it is the fourth one, but you will be able to, to look at numbers one, two, and three that I held from Saturday, Tuesday, Wednesday, this week, and you'll be able to see that for a little while yet. I will leave them up. What I wanted to talk to you today was, let's make some soup. Soup is one of those dishes that I absolutely need in the wintertime. So we'll talk about eating seasonally in a minute. Now, if you want to be one of the first 10 that like either any one of my um, series and share it, you got to do the two of them. Like either my page or my post, but you got to share. So my intention is to reach as many people as possible this year to bring better living into their life. Now, learning to feel blessed instead of bruised wasn't easy. I had to learn boundaries, and we talked about that in part two. Yesterday, in part three, I talked about having my cup of magic in my special little cup, and I vary the cups, of course, and they get washed in between. You know the drill. But having those things around that I know the ingredients, where they came from, what they're supposed to do, and how did I get there? Well, because I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia 20 years ago, and I really wanted to look outside the box to find solutions that weren't taking drugs. Now, I'm not telling you that I have never taken any medicine to help myself. Of course I have, and I'm not going to stand here or anywhere else if you see me speak on a soapbox to tell you that you should do this and you shouldn't do that because when you're in overwhelm life is a mess whatever you're going through you're noticing changes in your energies in your own health and when I'm talking energies I'm not just talking what you eat I'm also talking what you absorb into you what's going on in your life it's not so easy to find solutions you're trying to figure out everything yourself, what I should do, what I shouldn't do. And I know myself, I felt crushed with the weight of self-doubt and fear. Now I'm going to talk about that in a few minutes, but let's talk about doing some soup. I'm going to bring my cup of magic over and I'm not even going to use a big pot because I'm not even turning on my stove. Earlier this week, I had a nice big fat squash in my pantry. One of the squashes, and I actually know where it came from because I picked it myself, and one of the last few squashes I have um, for the winter from this batch. And what I had to do to cut this is I actually had to put it in the microwave. I can't do, I don't have the strength in my hands for all the cutting up that I used to do and all the digging and the gardening, and you can see my tower in the background. If you haven't been here before, that is my aero aeroponic growing tower that I get all of my herbs and my greens off in the winter time. I've got a couple spots on there with flowers, but flowering fruits or vegetables, I wait till I put it outside in the spring. So back to the squash. I chose this squash and I microwaved it a little bit so it would be much easier to cut. It just softened it. Actually, I put it on reheat. So really with no force at all, I get to open it. And this is a butternut. Now, one of the favorites in, in my family and one of the most common that I knew was buttercup. And that's very different because it's small and round and green, but it has the same color flesh inside. So you do want to take out all of those seeds inside. You don't want those in your soup or in your dish. So I'm just going to scrape out 
the innards. Yeah, seeds fly. With seeds flying across the room, and I'll have to pick those up after. So you're just taking out the seeds and the slime, just like when you're doing a pumpkin for the kids at Halloween. Just cleaning that all out of there. Now there's lots of different squashes out there. And when I'm talking eating seasonally, I don't eat so much squash in the summertime before it's ripe, but I do eat a lot in the wintertime. You, we harvest them at the end of the year, and it's just one of the things I just love to have around as a staple. I'm just going to pull out the rest of it there, pull out the seeds, get them all out. There you go. I had it in the fridge for a little while, so it's not quite as soft as it was before. So that one, I'll show you what I was doing with it. Let's rinse my sticky fingers off here. I actually was taking the squash, the one that I baked. I was actually slicing it like this. Now the skins are soft enough to eat if you want, but what I do is just making sure that I'm still on here. There you go, I am. Thank you for my right arm angel. <laughs> She's out there making sure that the posts are up. See, you can't do everything on your own. I sure tried. And I'm very grateful for having my right arm to assist. Now, what I did with this is I cut the squash in slices and then I just pan sear them. These are already partially cooked. So I'm really taking what I've got left over. It's the end of the week. I'm going into the fridge and you could call this recipe a kitchen sink recipe. Everything but. So I do go into my fridge and what I'm doing is I'm actually popping it right into my kick butt blender, my Ferrari that um, I received, got not too long ago. So here's the cooked one. All I did with that, because I didn't have a whole lot of time this week to stand and watch it uh, roast on the stove, is I popped it into my tiny oven into my small toaster oven over there and you can see it's been cooked. It's actually been baked and this is the one that I've been slicing off to add to my meals this week because overwhelm is being underplanned, and I sure didn't want to be overwhelmed for my live appearances. To be able to support you properly and to be able to think, keep my fibro brain going. So all I'm going to do is just take the peel off. It's just the outer part. And put all these pieces into the blender. Because this is going to be like a two minutes prep for soup. The worst is putting the ingredients together. That's not so hard to do if you've got help in the family. So what I like to do is I like to share the things that I do in my kitchen to speed things up because when I don't eat properly, I don't feel so good. So my energy does not stick around very long and it's important. Hey, I'm just as busy at my saucy seasoned, in my saucy season and sometimes sassy midlife so um, I want you to be too. Boy, if you're not there, you will be someday. And these are the things that I started learning to do after I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia. That was quite the beast. You know, I really wanted to, okay, now we know what it is. It had been five years, had no idea what I was, what I felt I was dying from. Guess what? I wasn't dying. I was blessed, but I still felt terrible. So with that, I learned to put more of the things into my lifestyle, into my eating that were good for me. So that's what I do today as a health coach with a whole lot more training and experience. I work with you to support you through making adjustments for cleaner eating and lifestyle. That's what reviving means, not merely surviving through whatever mess life has to dump on you. I'm going to remove my little board 
and bring my cutting board, that one I like to keep for my teapots, back to you. Now, I'm going to put a little bit of garlic in there, and I know where this garlic came from because I picked it up on one of my um, gadabouts, one of my days that I was out and about. What was I doing? Oh, I was exploring a new project. So on my way back, I saw this sign, handwritten sign, at the side of the road that said, Garlic for sale. Uh. <laughs> I've been known to come to a very quick start. Other times I've done it for stones and I'll do it when I see fresh products too. It's a cute little town. Don't ask me what the name of it is, but it was here close to Ottawa. So all I did was just take a clove of garlic and I popped it in there because what I have is I have some pesto and in this pesto, I didn't have any garlic in it. I actually have pumpkin seeds, parsley. What else did I put in there? I put basil, cilantro and no garlic. So I already have cubes made up that I can put in to the works flavor. You don't need a lot of salt, a lot of sodium, but what I am going to do is I'm going to put a pinch in and I have this cute little spoon that gives me just a pinch. That's a family heirloom. See the tiny little spoon? That's one of my family heirlooms and I love it. It's actually a real salt spoon before we had all the, the shaker. Now, of course, I'm gonna put some pepper in there as I love pepper. And like I said the other day, if you are using turmeric, it's pepper that helps your body absorb the benefits of turmeric. So making your cup of magic, and you can use that too, no problem. Don't even have to pay me a commission. <laughs> Make sure that you have a couple or three or even four peppercorns in there. You won't actually be able to di differentiate between or with the pepper in there, but it will make the turmeric work better for you. So the other thing that I pulled out of the freezer were some uh, things I had frozen. I had actually processed them down earlier. And this one is, where's my label? Ah, hang on. Of course, it's fennel. It looks very much like onion after it's been processed down. It was just the name. I didn't put it all in because I'm not making a huge batch. Here's the other thing I have. I have onion. And you can see where it was frozen. I still have some chunks. So put those veggies in that you like. And if there's someone in the house that doesn't like them, you can hide them. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend this down so it's a beautiful creamy soup after. But I still have some other ingredients I like to use. This is a curry spice blend that contains a little bit of salt. Hence, I'm not putting a whole lot of salt into it. I already had salt as well in the pesto. Now you can get my pesto recipe off my website at www.yourbetterlivingcoach.com. Remember, go and get your free report first, then come back to the main page, go to where it says blog at the top in the menu. When you hit blog, you're going to find recipes. So to keep in, um, keep track and keep up to the recipes that I'm putting, if you want fit, fast, and fun recipes, things to enhance flavoring, uh, recipes that are just crazy quick to save you time and money, by the way, then make sure that you either follow me here on Facebook, just click that follow when I get finished, or on my website. So there's two places that you can follow me there. Now, all I'm going to do is put uh, about half a teaspoon in because this isn't a large batch of soup. When I'm doing a big pot on the stove, then I'll probably put a full teaspoon in. But this is a local chef that had put this together and they have a little hobby farm. And I purchased this at one of the kiosks, one of the shows that we have around the area. The ingredients are turmeric, cardamom, green, garam masala, cumin, coriander, peppers, salt, cinnamon, and cloves. But you didn't think about that, huh? 
So all of those flavorings work really, really, really good with any of the squashes. You can sometimes substitute squashes. Spaghetti squash, nah, not so much. Buttercup, butternut, winter squash, and even pie pumpkins. As long as you have that something to give a little bit extra flavor, nobody will know that you substitute. Oh, the other thing you can pop in. You could also do uh, sweet potatoes that have already been baked, and I'll often do a whole pan of sweet potatoes. So this is just a different way to do soup, a little quicker, a little faster. Now, because I'm gonna be putting water in here, I'm gonna be putting enough water to cover and a little bit more because it will allow the soup to be blended down. This soup will be creamy, it'll be a potage. There isn't a snitch of dairy in sight, nowhere. Now, because I'm doing that, I'm also going to use this vegetable uh, bouillon powder. It's organic and all it has in it is vegetables. So a little bit of flavor enhancing here. Hey, there's no reason why you can't up the flavor. And that's, these are some of the things I will talk about in my program. Now I do have a program starting next week and I'll tell you a little bit more about that after. So hang in there with me. I do have a secret ingredient. Eh, you know me. Or two. I'll tell you the first one. The first one is ginger. Now this ginger is the ginger that I used at the first of the week and it was frozen. See that? That is what happens to the ginger once it starts to thaw or once it's thawed out and you can actually get the juice out of it without the fiber, without the pulp and without working really, really hard. So the rest of the juice, well, I'm just gonna squeeze this out. It needs to thaw out just a little bit more because I'm gonna use that juice when I make my fermented tea called kombucha. So I'm gonna put that on the side because now I have a little bit of ginger flavoring there. Remember what I talked about? And if you weren't here before, I talked about what I do with my clients is based, mostly based on anti-inflammatory foods. Anti-inflammatory foods because inflammation is at the root of most of our modern uh, diseases or conditions that are happening today. Cancer, diabetes, uh, fibromyalgia. There are so many diseases out there that inflammation is the root of. So I'm looking at supporting you through making changes to your eating with anti-aging and disease prevention included with the bonus that you may even lose those extra pounds because you're not just what you eat. And if you've had a hard time trying to lose those pounds, it may not be what you're putting in your mouth. You are more than what you eat. It may be other things, other hormones that are being affected because of other things that are going on in your life. That's the kind of support you will receive by understanding what's happening and finally, finally losing that extra weight if that's something that you want to do. It wasn't in any um, intentions of mine when I went to get my training. Mine was to increase my energy and to deal with, manage what was happening with the fibromyalgia. And I've seen that change in a cycle of about every two or three years. So if I want to stay with at least outside that door, then I know I need to do specific things for me. So determining together what those things might be for you is my job and working together, we make a difference in your life. And you know what? Difference in your life, that it has this ripple effect because we're not islands under ourselves. Male or female, whatever's happening to the adult in the family, and I saw this with my own family, still do, if it's not right with you, it's not gonna be right with them. We're connected. Where's my heart? We're connected from the heart. 
So with that, I'm going to blend this baby down. It's not warm by any means, but if you have baked your squashes, well, be able to pull this out a little bit so you can see what's happening. You can see it all come about here. Just pull out my cord just a little bit more. I didn't plan that one very well now, did I? All right, so I'm moving her over so you can see what's going on. Now, I didn't really measure out anything. I know I hated that when my I had a beloved mother-in-law come and spend a whole day with me when I wanted to learn to make a pile of pies because she brought her family up on a farm. She had mostly boys. She had only one girl in the family and she had six kids that she never made just one pie for heaven's sakes because it would be gone in a nanosecond. She made a lot. And when I first got into my catering business, well, I wasn't just going to be making one dessert or one pie or one loaf of bread. I was going to be making a lot. So Grandmama Alicia came over and she spent a day with me. And it was a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And it's like, oh, I'm never going to be able to do that. Well, I apologize if I'm doing that to you. But really, you don't have to measure everything. You can go on my website though, if that is a challenge for you. And the recipe for my harv roasted harvest vegetable soup is right there. And I do it a little differently. I wanted to do something different this time for you too. So this is a quickie. It's actually gonna be my supper tonight. There you go. I'm gonna turn this on so it just begins to circulate. Now I'm going to turn it up. And turn it off. If I was to leave this, this looks a little green, doesn't it? If I wanted it, and that's because of, before I go any further, that's because of the pesto I put in it. If you want to keep it more on the orange side, you have people that are going to say, well, it's green. Um, then you absolutely go and uh, put some roasted sweet potatoes in it or roasted carrots, which I have a whole bunch more in the fridge, and I'll do that after. The secretest, can I say that? The most secret ingredient is apple cider vinegar. Years ago, my grandparents used this for arthritis. They would have their tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, or it was touted as being a good thing to do, and people are still using it. So when the soup has been blended down and it's nice and creamy, I'm going to put it on the soup, but it, it's way too loud and way too long to do it here. It actually heats in this thing. I'm going to take and put a few drops of apple cider vinegar in my soup bowl as I go along, more or less depending on what your, your taste buds are doing. But right now, I'm going to get rid of this mess, which will be an easy cleanup. Now, how long did that take? I've uh, been on for 25 minutes, but honestly, it doesn't even take that long. Ah! I was chatting most of the time. I've talked a lot about reviving and what it means. Reviving from whatever mess that's going on in your life means setting priorities time management, and setting boundaries. So if you need to set boundaries for your own health, for you to feel better, it's not being selfish, not by a long shot. Think about how much of you you're giving away. And making those boundaries is maybe saying yes to you, but saying no to something else then that might create a little bit of a storm too. I need something from you this time. This is the last of my series of Cooking Amidst Chaos, and I've shared with you some of the recipes that I have available. I call them Fit, Fast, and Fun because it's just so easy to make. This one, 
It's my kitchen sink recipe. So if you want to increase your energy and decrease your stresses, I would like to know what you need. Do you want to make practical adjustments? I know most of you are too shy to leave any comments on the bottom of the feed. Thank you, Zena. I got your comment yesterday. It was very much appreciated. If you are too shy, don't be worried. You're sitting out there listening and watching. I hope you found something useful. Would you share it with me? You don't have to share it here where everybody else can see it. You can share it as a private message here on Facebook, or you can use the contact button as well to get in touch with me. If you're on my website, you can contact me there. Next week, I will be launching the beta testing for my program called the 10 Week Eating for Energy Kickstart. Why 10 weeks? Well, 10 weeks will give you a good idea of how you can feel cleaning up your eating and your lifestyle. If you're going to lose any weight, you're going to lose weight in that. And I tell you, it's, it's a wonderful feeling because you just feel so much better if that's what you want to do. Would you please let me know what you need or what you want? What do you need to make it easier for you to clean up your eating? I won't shoot on you, not for a minute. I'm an adult. I don't appreciate people telling me what to do either. So I would like to know specifically what you need so that I can improve my programs. I've mentioned that the program next week is a beta launch, which means that I'm limiting the number. There are five spots left. So I'm halfway to my goal of working very closely with 10 of you. I haven't revealed the number before because I wanted not to influence you, but I wanted to be able to work very closely with you to support you through it. You'll get me every single week where I won't be here on Facebook for support. You can ask me questions. You will even have my contact information where you can ask those questions that, oh, you just thought of. You can text me. I am not going to be able to do that when I have a hundred people in the program. So with, will you be one of my privileged few? Because I will look after what your needs are for 10 whole weeks. I will guide you. I will give you the information so that you can make intelligent decisions toward better living. No more feeling the pressure. Let's take on your strengths. No more self-doubt and fear. I've been crushed in my life with self-doubt and fear. And I had only wished I'd had my mentors around at that time. I needed to find new mentors. So if you'd like to work with me, please be one of those ones that like my page and share one of these videos. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. It has been such a privilege and it's almost supper time for all of us. So I'm gonna say bye, but please, if you'd like to be one of the 10, the first 10 that gets a free consultation with me, that's a half an hour just for you. And how many times in a day or a week or a month to do something just for you. Bye now. I'm Elaine Cooper, your Better Living Coach. And till we meet again.